Last lecture we spoke, we talked about vector, vectors in two dimensions. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at vectors in three dimensions. Let me start off by drawing a simple uh, basis, set of basis vectors in two dimensions. So I've got the x-axis and the y-axis. So it looks like this. And these are at right angles to one another. Now imagine the z-axis coming out. So I'm going to have to draw this, you know, on a flat page. But if you could imagine the z-axis here is out like this. And the z-axis is perpendicular to both the x and y. Now I'm going to draw a force vector in here. So let's see. My force vector starts at the origin. Here's the origin and goes up this way. So this is a force vector in three dimensions. Now imagine this force vector here in three dimensions. i um, going to draw each of the components. So here's the z component. I draw it per uh, parallel to the z-axis down to some point like here. Now this point, you can imagine, is in the xy plane. So from here, I could draw in the xy plane, I draw the x component, which is parallel to this x-axis, and it'll intersect the y-axis here. And then I also can draw the y component, which is parallel to the y-axis, and it'll intersect the x-axis there. So these three components, which I'm going to label f sub z, f sub y, and f sub x, these three components make up the vector, uh, the red vector here, which is the force vector. Let's go back and label the force vector, this red line, this red vector, F. Now there's lots of different ways I could um, write the force vector F. So let me do some of these here. So we've got F vector. One way is just to write the by components, F sub X in the x hat direction, so that's here along along the x axis, plus f sub y in the y hat direction, plus f sub z in the z hat direction. So that's one way we could write this force vector f. Now there's a second way we could write this force vector f. And it's in terms of two angles. So I'm just going to um, write it separately here. So if we have two angles that we call theta y and phi, those are the two angles we're going to define. Theta y is the angle between the y-axis and the f. f. So that's the angle between the y-axis and f. And then we've got phi, which is the angle between the force vector f projected onto the xz plane and x. Let me write that out. OK, here's it, here again. Phi is the angle between f projected onto the xz plane and x. So you've got to go back and think about that f force vector projected onto the xz plane, which I'm not going to draw it here, um, but then that'll form some line in the xz plane, and then take the angle between that and x, and that is phi, the angle phi. Now if you have those two angles, you can write down the components f sub y, 
f sub x and f sub z in terms of f and those angles. So if you take the magnitude of the force vector, so that's just the, the length of that force vector, times the cosine of the angle we define, uh, theta, dot, theta y sub y, that is the y component of the force vector. And then similarly, let, I'll write down the um, components the x and z components of the force vector. Okay, so I've written down the um, x component of the force vector, f sub x, and that's equal to the, the magnitude of the force vector times the sine of theta y. Remember, the 30, theta y is the angle between the y-axis and the force vector times the cosine of phi, and phi is that other angle. Where then you've got um, the z component of the force vector is equal to the magnitude of the force vector times sine theta y sine phi. Okay, so there we go. You, I've, I've done two different ways of writing the force vector in three dimensions. If we could figure out um, the, the x components of the force, the f sub x, f sub y, f sub z, we can write down the force component like this. Or if we happen to know these angles here, we can write down the components um, here and then go back up this way and plug it in there to get the complete force vector. All right, and so there's other ways of defining a 3D vector. And one is to do it with what's called direction cosines. So direction cosines... We just define um, the cosine of ang the, an angle between the force vector and a specific axis. So we, we end up like this. F sub x equals the magnitude of the force vector times the cosine of theta sub x. And similarly for the other two axes. Okay, so here we've got the direction cosines, where in each case we define these, these angles, theta sub x, theta sub y, and theta sub z, as the angle between the force vector and the x-axis, or the force vector and the y-axis, so on for the z-axis. Um, then we get the, the components f sub x, f sub y, and f sub z, and then of course we can just write the force vector as the sum of these components, f sub x in the x hat plus f sub y in the y hat plus f sub z in the z hat direction. Okay, so this is a second way or a third way of writing a 3D vector. So this is what we're looking at um, is different ways of writing a 3D vector. I've got another one I'll draw on the next page. Okay, continuing on, another way of writing a 3D vector, it, um, just carrying it where we left off, I've got the force vector here, and that equals, if I just factor this out, the magnitude of the force vector times these cos theta sub x in the x hat direction. Now I'm going to start using this in, uh, notation i hat. So the i hat is a unit vector in the x direction. And then cosine theta y in the j hat direction. And again, the j hat direction is a j hat is a unit vector in the y direction. And then the the third one, the z component, and we call that the k hat direction. Okay, so this is just what I wrote on the previous screen um, where I factored out the magnitude of the force and set things up this way. And the advantage of doing that is that we can then define a unit vector. We'll call that lambda. So lambda has a, a we call it a unit vector, has a length of 1. 
and it has a direction and that's the interesting part is it's got the direction of um the force vector and so the lambda vector is just equal to this quantity in the parentheses so let me write that down okay so here's the unit vector let me get this plus in the sign here okay and it's you can see the unit vector lambda again it's um it has a length of one and it's in the direction of the force vector that's what makes it so nice and it has um, this is how you could compute it using the um, the cosines we found before so once you write that down um, you would have this relationship because it has a, a length of one you could write this um, where the cosine squared of each angle would sum to one so one is going to equal cosine squared of the um, theta sub x plus cosine squared of theta sub y plus cosine squared of theta sub z so in some situations you could use this relationship to find out some of these angles so again th this notation indicates you know you take the cosine of theta sub x and square it so on now here's another case so again all we're doing is we're looking at 3d vectors and methods of writing down the 3d vector so in this case we've got a force where we know its magnitude and we know two points on its line of action so how could we write down the complete um, force vector when when this is what's known so a good example of this is a rope or a cable where the the force is be, be, being applied or it's pulling in the same direction as the cable. So if we know two points on the cable, then we could use that, use this method to write it down. So let me write some stuff out here. Okay, we're going to consider two points on the cable. We're going to call them M and N. And those two points are separated by a distance. And the distance will indicate by D. So I've got the, the line MN, I can just write this way. It's D sub X in the I hat direction plus D sub Y in the J hat direction plus D sub Z in the K hat direction. Now if that's the, the line, I can write the unit vector, which is just the equation for that line, M sub N, divided by the magnitude of M sub N. And that's going to be, the magnitude is D. So I can write it just this way, 1 over D times this quantity d sub x in the i hat direction plus d sub y in the j hat direction plus d sub z in the k hat direction so now we've got the unit vector and you can see what we're going to do next we're just going to say that the force is equal to the magnitude of the force times the unit vector and we could get you know we've got the unit vector right here so again this this started off as how we're going to find um, the three-dimensional vector of the force when all we have is the force divided by its magnitude and two points on its line of action so if we have that we can use this process that I've sketched out here to write down the complete um, vector force vector so again what would we do we would take um, the the magnitude of it times the unit vector lambda which is just this um, d sub x in the i hat plus d sub y in the j hat plus d sub z in the k hat and the whole thing's divided by d the distance between these two points from this we can also just um, compute the direction cosine. So remember the direction cosines were these cos theta sub x, cos theta sub y, and I'm not going to fit be able to fit cos theta sub z in here. But in each case, to to compute those, we just have the d sub x that we we had up here divided by the d. That should be the cosine theta sub x. Similarly for cosine theta sub y and cosine theta sub z. It's just cosine theta sub z equals d sub z divided by d.